and around and around and around she grows. Selogeny pandorata, a big orchid, a pephitic orchid. Best way to grow this orchid would be on a tree trunk. What is so different about this orchid and when it comes to having to grow her potted up if you are considering to grow a Selogeny pandorata and you have to pot her up, as in my case, because you're not in beautiful, humid, hot Philippines, this is where the orchid comes from, and you just can't put her on a branch. Well, let me explain some of the growth habits of orchids that have rhizomes. More often than not, you have orchids that grow one growth to the left, the next one on the rhizome would be to the right, it would grow to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And usually with that, you get somewhat of a straight line. This orchid, take this into consideration, grows. From an older bulb, a new growth will grow on the left side of the new growth. The next new growth is growing on the left side of the new growth, even though it doesn't look obvious here, but you will see how it starts to evolve. And again, the next bulb, is on the left side of the previous growth and on the left side and on the left side and no this is not because of light training the only reason she's growing in a circle like this is because of light training if you were to mount this orchid let's say on a tree trunk i hope this is in focus let's say you mount your orchid up here on the tree trunk at the apex of the tree your selogeny will eventually grow down and then maybe come back up depending on where the light source is. But if the light source is always, let's say, continuous, it will start to do the creeping rhizome curling around the trunk because no growth on this orchid alternates. It's always on the left side in my case. Hmm, are you sure? You might want to be careful with the absolutes when it comes to growing orchids. If you have a Selogeny pandorata, let me know in the comments whether your growths are growing off of the right side of the previous pseudobulb. So we have a little bit of an issue here. Yes, I have to repot this orchid, even though she won't bloom for me because she doesn't get enough light during the winter months. Usually Selogenies, when they're growing their new growths, they should already be showing bloom spikes at this stage. The blooms come as the orchid is growing and then after blooming she continues with the growth matures and then repeat for next year but she needs a lot a lot of light during the winters in order to do that and mine doesn't get it still she's still on the patio and i will take care of her in the hopes that one day in the future things will improve and she can have the light levels that she needs during my winters again if you're a little bit squeamish about creepy crawlies i do have something that resembles a little ant hill at the base of the new growth so i'm not entirely sure if there's a colony in the pot we're soon to find out and if you want to stick around for the process consider yourself welcome on the patio it's breezy it's blustery it's a beautiful day i'm in short sleeves as you can tell <laughs> which makes it even better but what's going to happen here is i have to divide this orchid in order to put her back into the pot and Fortunately, because you can see the growth is right up against the edge. And if we're going to keep going with the principle of the left growth, look at where the next one is going to be. This is no bueno when you need to pot up a Selogeny pandorata. If you can get yourself a very long pot, rectangular pot, even better. Anyway, so she's going to come out of the pot. We are going to divide her and then somehow I'm going to try and see if both pieces will fit back into this pot or what other alternatives there are. I will trouble shoot together with you throughout the report process now let me see if she's even fully rooted in or because she is so big maybe i can just pull her out of the pot oops <laughs> no the new roots on this orchid are maybe starting maybe already somewhat advanced but i'm not too concerned about those at the moment because she doesn't dump her roots as a rule okay fair enough keep going i'm listening and again Careful with the absolutes. <laughs> she is solid. It is hammer time. We'll try to loosen her up from the back here. If there are any new roots in the pot at the front, don't want to bash those. Take two. Here she comes. We don't have an ant colony, which is great. 
We have attempts at root growth, which we will encourage. We're going to be removing some of these bracts, even though they're still green, but I don't want the roots to be going up. I need them in the pot. And normally, I say a root ball needs to be cleaned out and done properly every two to three years, even though I'm growing in an inorganic media. In this case, it is Lekka. But you see, if I wasn't dividing her, I would just tickle the roots, get rid of all the Lekka, cut off all the old roots that I can see, which we have some back here. But then I would just pot her up again. The fact that we're dividing her, I have to do a little bit more. We have another new growth starting here. What did I tell you? <laughs> Careful with the absolutes. That's awesome. But I have to somehow get into my three bulbs that I want as a minimum for the division. And that's why we have to be a little bit more radical with regards to removing the lecker so that I can get at the rhizome and split the orchid. The fact that I have a new growth coming is very, very encouraging. Very unusual. It's a first. And that is a pity in a way because that shows me the orchid is maturing. And she wants to do well, wants to perform, and here I am having to divide the rhizome now. I'm going to focus on the fact that the back end is going to need a little bit more help. So we'll leave five on them here and three here. So the rhizome cut will be right here. You see all these good roots in the front? As expected, there are dead roots in the back, but I do need to get in there and unfortunately do more than I really want to. As with any sologeny, she would be blooming for us at this stage if she were to get enough light during the winter months, but she doesn't in my environment, unfortunately. I can't have her outside with the winter temperatures as they are, but considering how the growth has developed, we should be seeing a spike. And just like with a psychopedalum, a sologeny would also grow her spike, bloom, and only then start maturing the growth that she bloomed on. I did have her bloom for me the first season she was with me, but I had different conditions back then. Beautiful blooms, love the green on black, the chocolatey color on the lip, doesn't smell very nice. She smells of a lot of dust in a room. And considering that the spike is so big, the blooms and everything are so abundant, that fragrance is relatively obvious. It's quite in your nose. It wafts around the air and you think that something needs to be dusted. Let's see what comes off when I just pull. There we go. Maybe we'll get a growth out of these back bulbs. It'd be awesome if that eye were to activate. And I'm just going to leave as many of the roots on because sometimes even old roots will still perform and anyway, they will serve as anchoring. So we'll see what happens, see what I do with this piece. And this piece pretty much is done. I'm not doing any more with it. What I want to show you, Sologeny roots have a wonderful characteristic that is a semblance of terrestrial roots. They're fuzzy. So that's pretty interesting. I always find that super interesting with this orchid and my lime bay as well. well. These roots are also dead and we can take some of them off, but I'm not going to do much more. My main concern is to pot her up in the pot together with the other piece and then hopefully get her to propagate. But first of all, we're going to do a practice run on how we're going to pot her back up before we go into the real thing. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate your company. It's good to have you. So one thing is, will this be long enough for two years in this pot? And the answer that I can see, yeah, two years. Yeah, I suppose I can get two years out of her in this pot. I really don't have a choice. I don't have a bigger pot, but the other piece is gonna have to be potted up separately. I'm gonna have to take off quite a bit of the media out of the back here to be able to maneuver and manipulate this part of the root ball because I can't have her rising. I need her at an angle so that the roots get into the pot straight away. Would you also consider giving this video a thumbs up, please? And if it's your first time on the patio with us here at Ninja Orchids and everybody else that are OGs, please consider subscribing to the channel and welcome.
Good to have you. That looks precarious, teetering like that. <laughs> Ooh, clean pot and mask quickly. Very, very rarely do I not fully clean my lacquer. But seeing as I've got a pot the size of a manhole, <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to swallow a lot of media. So I'm not getting out 100% fresh media. I quickly rinsed this off, took out as many of the steely as I could. Normally you do not see me using lecker that still has old velamen on it. The reason being, normally I boil, sterilize my lecker and then it goes to another orchid, so to speak, recycled. This is the lecker from the same orchid. It doesn't matter if there's stuff on it. Makes no difference here nor there. I'm not cross-contaminating. Should I have any lecker left over? Then that shall be cleaned properly and addressed and sterilized as should be so that there is no cross-contamination. So that is an FYI. This is not my status quo for every repot. And this orchid is going to be a little bit lower in the pot so I may not even need all the old lecker. I already have my microfiber. You can see I haven't been that pedantic about cleaning out the pot either, scrubbing away at whatever old velamen was in there. I did my best. Now it's just a matter of keeping the microfiber up so that the root ball actually gets saturated all the way because depth, yes. While this orchid is not shallow rooted, the more moisture we get up, the better. If you're living in a very humid climate, you wouldn't have to concern yourself too much about having a dry top layer. In my case, I need to try and cancel that out. gonna make a little mountain here around the base of the mature or new growth raise the lecker up so any new roots coming out can go straight in they don't have to go looking for it and this new growth down here is nice and snug already up against the media let's hope it makes it and doesn't abort now that it's got less to work with We've done quite a bit of damage to the root system. This orchid isn't finicky about root disturbance it's just oh you see how big she is she needs a lot of them. And she grows a lot of them happily, willingly, readily. So that's not the issue. It's now getting her in the pot and hopefully nothing untoward happens to her. Anyway, I'm going to concern myself with the second piece and I'll be back. Because of the windy day today, I am gauging whether the orchid is too wobbly at the front there. However, where she normally lives is a bit more protected towards the hedge. I'm not concerned. I don't think that the wobbling is excessive. The back bulb, all I've done is just pot them up in lecker. We shall see what happens. Of course, as well, much lower in the pot in this case to counteract the low humidity that I'm anticipating. Let's see what happens there. Maybe the eye that we saw will activate. And if you stayed to the end, I want to say thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time, the support that comes with it. It's good to be back on the patio, even though it was a rather breezy day. Anyway, thank you for your support. Have yourself a beautiful day on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.